I started this journey on discovery of the real Joseph Smith about 18 months ago when I was up late one night and looking at Wikipedia and genealogy and I realized that I had some mysteries in my own family I wanted to research and what I researched I found to be very interesting but that led me into a connection with our Mormon heritage in Joseph Smith and Nauvoo. The Jollies are reported to have converted to the Mormon church in about 1842. They show up on the census, the Nauvoo census of 1842. But as I was reading through the accusations of polygamy and the reason why Joseph Smith was assassinated and the reason why my family was in, uh, in Nauvoo in 1842 and why they joined the Mormon church, I came upon a book by John C. Bennett, quite a character. And if you want to stay up late at night reading something that that just has you rolling over in laughter. It's John C. Bennett's expose on Joseph Smith and Mormonism. This was written, oh, probably just a couple months after John C. Bennett was accused by the Mormon Anavu Relief Society and by Joseph Smith of being a harem polygamist. That was against the law. And it wasn't just that he was practicing the polygamy we all know and love, which is the harem polygamy of Brigham Young. No, he had the women of Nauvoo divided up in different societies, different classes. You had the Cyprian saint, uh, you had the Cyprian sisters, which were the white veils, and they were the prostitutes. And then you had the Cyprian sist sisters with the green veils, and those were the women that just wanted to have adulterous relationships, but they would request it from the prophet. And then, yes, then we had the sisters of the black veil, which was the highest uh, sisterhood in which they could have sex with their husbands and I don't know exactly but it's quite hilarious this form of polygamy that John C. Bennett was practicing knew for a certainty that that Joseph Smith practiced polygamy because at one occasion he w went down Joseph Smith Jr.'s home in Ramus which is a little village outside of Nauvoo about 20 miles he picked Joseph Smith up from his home in Ramus and drove him up in the carriage to Nauvoo, where he proposed to one of these plural wives in an ante room someplace, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I thought, huh, who lives in Ramus? Why would Joseph Smith, why would John C. Bennett be picking up Joseph Smith Jr., the prophet, who lived in Ramus? Well, then it was disclosed through the church website that Joseph Smith would Jr. quite often visit his sister Sophronia Smith, and I think Catherine Smith lived in Ramus. But also, Ramus was notorious for being a hotbed of counterfeiting, horse rustling, etc. It was quite infamous at the time that the British saints started coming over because the Nauvoo Mormons had to publish a retraction or a disclaimer of the criminal activity that was going on in Ramus. So I thought, could it be that somebody's name, Joseph Smith, was going around proposing marriage to all these women, and these women, such as the Partridge Sisters, would not know that that was not the real Joseph Smith? And so that took me down to do some research in Nauvoo, and I went from Nauvoo to Ramus, and what did I find? Not only did, quote-unquote, John C. Bennett say he picked up a Joseph Jr., Joseph Smith Jr. from Ramus, but there was a Joseph Warren Smith Jr. that lived in Ramus, and that Ramus was actually called originally Ramesses. And the church, the LDS church, for some reason, has tried to conceal this. And my speculation is that the original Mormon church was an interracial religion, which was inviting interracial Native Americans, Black, Chinese, to come and settle into the Western states, and that would be a community for them. However, the British oligarchs, through the Campbellite movement, through the Quaker movement, infiltrated these interracial settlements with infiltrators who would just steal their money, cause vigilantism, and it, this was all a run-up to the Civil War in which Britain and the Crown was planning on breaking the United States up into balkanized sections, which uh, they promised Brigham Young, the British oligarchs promised Brigham Young he would have the whole western part of the United States. The Canadians were promised the whole northern part of, this, of the United States, and then the French Mexicans were promised the southern part. And this would all be broken up, and these balkanized states would be more easily managed by British oligarchy and their colonial aspirations.
did not quite work out that way, but they certainly did cause a lot of havoc. And one of the main pieces of this secret occult group that was breaking up all these uh, interracial communities it was the Mormon community. The Mormon community was inviting Native Americans. They were going to on missions to Native Americans. And, and of course, if, during these days when uh, you might be a little bit brown, you wanted to call yourself a Native American and not an interracial black person, because that meant you got, if you were a Native American Indian, you would get better rights. You would have rights, superior rights to land. You would have superior rights to all sorts of things. But also, you would not be sold into slavery, hopefully, but that wasn't quite true. Everybody was being sold into slavery during these days. To move on quickly, so Warren, so that got me directly interested in this Joseph Warren Smith Jr. and a Joseph Warren Smith Sr. Now, Joseph Warren Smith Sr. was reported to have been murdered or killed at Hans Mill. There is a Warren, Joseph Warren Smith Joseph Warren Smith Jr. listed on the 1842 Nauvoo census. And that's why I labeled one of my previous videos, Will the Real Joseph Smith Jr. Take the Stand? And it is my contention that during this whole Nauvoo period, Joseph, the real Joseph Smith Jr., in which all these Native Americans and interracial settlers were following and devoted to, was also himself known as an interracial or Native American because Lucy Max Smith's brother married a Native American. They're, the Scots, the Irish, they were all intermarrying during this period of time. There was intermarriage going on for a good two, three hundred years. So, and I will get to the Wikipedia articles showing that this fluidity of racial intermarriage was prevalent during this period of time until the leading up to the Civil War in which it became permanent part of laws that the races be separate, that there be no intermarriage. Just, uh, Brigham Young, he brought out all these interracial Native Americans to Utah and then quickly passed laws. Number one, enslaving people, enslaving Native Americans, and then number two, outlawing blacks from holding any kind of priesthood authority or any kind of power positions in the government. So that's what happened to the interracial Native Americans of the early Mormon movement. It was infiltrated and destroyed by the Brighamites. So that got me thinking. Hmm. Could this Warren Smith, Joseph Warren Smith Jr., be posing as Joseph Smith Jr., the person that wrote the actual Book of Mormon? So let's move on. So I looked up the genealogy of Joseph Smith Jr., and of course they say he was born in Sharon, Windsor County, Vermont. He died at Carthage, Hancock County, Illinois. He was the son of Joseph Smith Sr. and Lucy Smith. So far, so good. So let's punch through. And here's Joseph Smith seniors. Father, or genealogy, Joseph Smith, senior, son of Azel Smith and Mary Elizabeth Smith. So far, so good. And what should we have here? Azel Smith was the son of a Captain Samuel Smith and Priscilla Smith, husband of Mary Smith. But what's interesting here is he, Azel Smith the first is a the father of Parthenia Bradford. So I thought, who is Parthenia Bradford, and why don't you have a different last name? So we pull up Parthenia Bradford. And Parthenia is the daughter of Isaac Smith and Azael Smith and Mary Elizabeth Smith. So I'm thinking, how can a daughter have two fathers? That doesn't make any sense. We know that Azael Smith is the father of Joseph, but who's this Isaac Smith who's related to? A Parthenia Bradford Smith. Well, let's pull through. We're going to find out who Isaac Smith is. And this is, again, a mystery. So Isaac Smith is the father of Parthenia Bradford. Yes, we know that. And Joseph Warren Smith. Joseph Warren Smith, our dear Joseph Warren Smith that lived in Nauvoo. And also, my contention is he was posing as Joseph Smith Jr., the prophet, while Joseph Smith Jr. for three years during the Nauvoo period was on the run, undercover, 
living in Ohio, living with the Hales and uh, the other two days from Nauvoo. He was un under constant threat of arrest. And uh, it's my also my contention that he attempted to escape Nauvoo because he was being held prisoner there. Attempted to escape Nauvoo three different times with Emma Smith. And every time he was picked up by bounty hunters, tried, and then uh, escorted back by the vigilante Danites of John D. Lee, Porter Rockwell, Josiah Stoll. These were heavy-handed assassins. And they were the strong men that kept Joseph Smith Jr. in the state of Illinois. Joseph Smith Jr. Had, was not free to move from the state of Illinois unless he wanted to be arrested and tried and perhaps killed as a result of the Missouri warrants. So basically, we've got this Joseph Warren Smith. I'm just assuming here, because this is still a mystery unraveling, that Joseph Warren Smith is actually a cousin of Joseph Smith Jr. So that Isaac Smith is Joseph Smith Jr.'s uncle. And Isaac Smith is a brother to Azaziel Smith. And this would account for all the Smiths in Nauvoo and all the Smiths calling each other brothers, cousins. I mean, everybody was calling each other brother down there, but you'd call him Brother Smith, my brother Smith, my brother Hiram, my brother. But you'd be calling this my brother Joseph Warren Smith. They're cousins. Okay. So, but Joseph Warren Smith is not a good actor. Now, we know that all these Smiths, Hiram Smith, according to recent a Dartmouth biography, Hiram Smith attended the Dartmouth Moore's Charity School, Charity School for Indian Native Americans. So either Hiram Smith was Native American or he's posing as a Native American. And it also needs to be unraveled whether Hiram Smith was Joseph Smith Jr.'s actual brother or maybe Hiram Smith was his cousin. And you just called each other my family, my brother, my whatever, because that's the way you refer to each other. So assuming that Hiram Smith and Joseph Warren Smith may be brothers, and that Joseph Jr. and Joseph Sr. were not were cousins. This would explain why Hiram Smith was a Mason, and Hiram and Joseph Sr. was not allowed to be a Mason, and why Hiram Smith was attending this elite, prestigious, free of charge prep school or college school, and Joseph Jr. was not. Joseph Jr. was. 30 miles away. And according to this new biography, it's called Counterfeiters, etc., and Secret Combinations, Hiram Smith very well started Joseph Smith on this project. And it's going to be my contention, or I'm forming the working theory, that Joseph Smith was, in fact, Native American. And Lucy Mack Smith's brother did marry a Native American and had children by her. This was quite common. He was a merchant out on the prairie in Ohio, and he was Lucy Max Smith's brother. was very um, was very affluent, and he even had a town named after him. And his wife was a full blooded Native American, and his children then were half Native American. So this Native American bloodline probably runs through both Hiram's and Lucy Max Smith's family and. John Smith Jr. Somewhere along the line, there was another intermarriage and cousins became um, associated with these Native American bloodlines, which would be the perfect foil or the perfect setup for these Quakers from Dartmouth to sow the seeds of discontent and civil war. You, they used the Native Americans during the French Indian War. They went out and told them that if they fought against the English, that they could get lots of land, lots of money. Idea of of having Native Americans fight your battles was done for over 100 years in the United States. French got the Indians to fight the British. Then the British got the Indians to fight the colonialists. And so now we're going to have the Quakers going out and telling all these Native Americans that you're superior, you're from the House of Israel, you're, you, you know, let's fight these ugly, ugly white people and let's do away with them. Well, so in some respects, I, my theory is that Joseph Smith was set up to be a leader because of his Native American blood or maybe his black blood that was pretty evident to people to draw as a draw, much like Martin Luther King. And much like Martin Luther King, he was entranced for a while at 
the fact that he was going to be this new leader. And this is what they do with these upstart leaders. They tell them that you're special. You're going to be a leader of men. You're going to be leading your people to freedom, whatever. And it becomes a bit heady, as it did for Martin Luther King, who was tasked by these British, by these oligarchs in, coming out of Dartmouth and Yale and Harvard to be the new leader of the black movement. And he functioned quite well for a while, and he is talk of peace and Christianity was well received by everybody. But something happened along the way because Martin Luther started having his eyes opened that he was being used and the black community was being used by these Vietnam warmongers. And so he turned against the Vietnam War. And that is when it is speculated or been pretty well proved by, I, I think it's Colonel Pepper, had a trial, civilly tried, and that Martin Luther King was, in fact, murdered by a conspiracy, and several people were involved, including the FBI. And that has been proved civilly in court. So, much like Martin Luther King, it is going to be my contention that the Smith family realized, woke up and smelled the coffee, uh, shall we say, in the Kirkland banking failure, because they realized they were being used. And so, instead of being like a little uh, compliant Barack Obama, instead of being compliant like a little good little leader of, uh, of Native Americans and African Americans. Instead of being a Barack Obama, which they had hoped, Joseph Smith turned out to be a Martin Luther King. They decided, uh-oh, we're being used and we need to get out of here. And at the Kirtland banking failure, I'm going to show you through Lucy Max Smith's autobiography that Joseph Smith Sr. was held in captivity until they could get Joseph Smith to move to Missouri. Once Joseph Smith moved to Missouri, far west, then they allowed Joseph Smith Sr. to accompany his wife to meet his family in far west. That protected them from fleeing east.